A warm welcome to this event on working time, where we are questioning the full-time norm of 40 hours. Is this still a model for the future? Or is it time to say goodbye to it and to strive for a shorter full-time standard? Working time reduction and a four-day work week is a topic that has gotten more attention in recent times. The pandemic showed that we can work differently and more flexible, at least in office jobs, and that we felt less stress by saving travel time. Technical development and AI promised productivity increases. And at the same time, the green transition is questioning the way we live and produce. The UK trial and the study that was published this year showed positive results associated with the four-day week work. And more and more trade unions have this on their agenda. Some of them seeing successful results as in Iceland and in Germany, there are new demands, which we will look more closely today. My name is Maike Büscher and I work at, as a policy advisor at the Friedrich Ebert Foundation. I will be moderating this event today. This webinar is organized by the Trade Union DEEG, the Swedish trade union that organized workers at the cultural, creative and communication sector in cooperation with the Nordic office of the Friedrich Ebert Foundation, which works with a dialogue between the Nordic countries and Germany. This event is a perfect example of our work. Before I get into more practical information, I would like to give the word also to Anna Truberg, president of DEEG. Thank you very much, Hi, Maike. Uh, I am so happy to see that so many of you have chosen to join us today for this webinar. Uh, I'm also very excited to delve deeper into the issue of work time reduction. Um, just a few years ago, this issue seemed kind of impossible. There were few trials around the world. Um, there's a lot of norms associated with how many hours we should work every week. Um, but you know how it is. Uh, everything is impossible until it suddenly is possible. And it is made possible by us, by humans, who wants to change things for the better. Um, as I said, this, this issue was not at all hot in Sweden a few years ago. But my organization, DEEK, um, our members looked at this. And there was discussions for many years. And finally, we agreed that, yes, we are going to take this issue on. And we are going to change the norms. Um, so I'm very happy that you are here with us today to, you know, dig a little bit deeper into this issue, see what what lies ahead and what moves that we need to take forward to to push this on. Um, so let's crack on. I hand everything over to you again, Michael, and you will yeah. guide us through. Yes, thank you for the pleasant welcoming words. I'm also very happy to welcome the speakers to this event. First, we have Germ from Germany, Sophie Janneke, head of the Collective Bargaining Policy Issues Department at IG Metall's Executive Board. Um, IG Metall is Germany's biggest trade union with 2.2 million employees um, from such areas as metals, iron and steel, and yes, also Tesla, but this is another topic. And after her input, uh, we will... Uh, have two comments, one by Anna Droberg from DEEG, we just heard her, and the other one from Hampus Andersson, who is research officer at Kommunal, the Swedish trade union for municipal workers. Before we start, I will also uh, want to give you some practical information. So this event, you notice, is all in English and it will be recorded. And if you have questions, um, please use the chat. Uh, we will in the end devote time to answer your um, questions and uh, please write them in English. And even if they are directed to a specific person, please specify the person's name. So with this, uh, let's start. Uh, so a warm welcome to you, Sophie Janneke. Um, we are very happy to have you here. Um, and the news of IG Metall's claiming for a shorter work week in the ongoing collective bargaining uh, round uh, received much attention in here and internationally in the Nordic countries. So what can you tell us about IG Metall's demands and the German debate? Um, so please, the floor is yours. And you also wanted to share a presentation. I hope that's yes. working. Yes, great. Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give me the chance to talk a bit about the German working time realities, especially the working time realities in the sectors IG Metall uh, trade union is active in, which, as you already said, is mostly metal sector, metal electric sector, steel sector, and some craft sectors too. Um, yeah, the working week of the future is not 40 hours. Uh, we can absolutely agree with this. Actually, the 
working week of the present uh, is not 40 hours neither, uh, to be honest, at least for the majority of workers, it's not uh, because especially women are working uh, less in, in German labor market. Um, but let me start. Yeah, it should work now. And it's not working. Yes, here we go. Um, first, I would like to introduce you a little bit into the German debate on, on working time reduction. Um, as it was said before, the debate uh, became a bigger issue since the the uh, pandemic years where we just started to, to work a bit differently and this in a very, very fast time. So everything went very fast and from one day to the other, it was possible to work in a different way, um, which I think opened space for, uh, yeah, making things different in the future too, because we saw it works to make uh, things different. Um, and since this year, the public debate uh, on working time reduction, especially on the four day week is very uh, vivid in, in Germany. Here you see uh, at first a statistics, which is from May this year. And there was asked, it was asked um, for the wish to have a four day week. And here you see that uh, actually 80% of full-time workers in Germany um, would wish to have a four day week. The vast majority, of course, uh, with wage compensation. I will come back to this later. So this is a real, uh, a big number, I think, of, of people uh, wishing to have shorter working week. And then you see some uh, newspapers. Uh, of course, it's in German. Maybe uh, you will understand a bit of it. I can translate it for you. Um, there have been reference to Iceland, of course. Um, it says four day week in Iceland. Is it a model for us? Um, study from Iceland. Uh, employees are happier there. The dream of the uh, four day week and why it could become reality for us too. But of course, on the other hand, uh, it's a very polarized debate. Uh, and it's not that everybody in Germany would be in favor of it, as you can imagine. And of course, the more conservative press says um, it's the, the demand of IG Metall for four day working week is completely lacking sense of reality. And uh, there uh, down in the picture, you see the uh, general secretary of the National Employers Federation. And uh, he says, you can achieve a good work-life balance even with a work uh, if you work uh, 39 hours a week. This guy has three children and of course everybody was asking what is his wife doing? Is she also working or what is she doing? So as you see here the, the debate is very polarized and of course it became more and more critical and polarized uh, as more we came to a to, uh, trade union uh, struggle, let's say, because if it's not only a debate in, the, in theory, but if it comes to practice, then of course, uh, things become a bit more difficult. So, uh, where do we stand, um, especially as uh, IG Metall, as Metal Workers Union? Um, we have to say that uh, since the mid 90s, we have the 35 hour week in the metal and electric sector, um, and, but also in some other sectors, in the steel sector, in the wood and plastic sector. Um, so we are working on a quite low weekly working hour standard. But as you see here, it's not uh, valid for all the German, for, for, for all sectors in Germany. Um, the, the working times in, in the different sectors in Germany are very different. As you see here in the metal sector, we have the 35 hour week, but uh, if we go, for example, to the public sector, there we have uh, 38, 39, 39.5 hours. Uh, we have the, the health sector where we have around, I think, uh, also 38 hours. So it's not that the whole German society uh, has a 35 hour week, um, but I think it's important to know for the background why uh, IG Metall 
uh, is able to ask for a four-day work, work week uh, because we already are on 35 hours, which is collectively agreed in our collective uh, agreements since the 90s. So mid 90s till uh, 2006, we had a collectively agreed four day week at the VW group, uh, which was a weekly working time from uh, 28 hours per week. Um, this was put in place due to employment security reasons uh, because the VW uh, group wanted to skip 30,000 jobs in Germany. And of course the trade union could not agree with this. And in the end, we came to this agreement for the four day week at VW. Um, why am I highlighting this so much? Because it's, uh, it, it is a very, very good example for what uses a four day week can have, um, for example, securing employment, but also work life, better work life balance. Uh, they had less uh, sick leaves in VW when they worked in a four day week. So I think this was, and, and I mean, you have to keep in mind that in the VW group, 100,000 people are working in Germany. So it was a very, very big example and not only a small company of 200 people or something like this. So um, we had this experience with a four day working week, uh, but it was skipped in 2006 uh, due to uh, a new crisis in the VW uh, group. And then it was uh, very quiet about working time, you can say. Um, IG Metall in, the 2000, uh, in 2016 made a big campaign on working time because we had the feeling that we should uh, become more active on this field again. Um, and in 2018, we made a very, very uh, important collective agreement on individual working time rights. So uh, we agreed on a choice between money and free days. So workers can choose if they get a certain amount of money per year or if they get eight extra days free. Um, this was very important because it was the first time that we did not make a collective reduction of working time, but uh, implemented this individual choice option to reduce the individual working time. Um, and then pandemia come, uh, came and uh, of course we had uh, a lot of employment problems during pandemia uh, in the industry and so in 2021 we made a first collective agreement on an optional four-day week for companies with employment problems in Germany. Uh, it was also for the metal sector, so it was the option to go collectively on a four-day week if a company has employment problems with partly wage compensation. Uh, it's, it's not with full wage compensation, but as it refers to a crisis in the uh, company, we said it is okay in, in, in the times of those crises that everybody uh, pays a bit of the crisis. Yes, and then the issue of a four day week uh, was not to stop anymore. <laughs> Uh, at least not in the public debate. Uh, and we, we saw that in 21, 22, uh, a lot of companies made collective agreements on company level um, on the four day week. Uh, and these collective agreements have been very from very different nature. And it was uh, in, in different subsectors, but only on company level. Uh, this is important because, uh, of course, we are uh, now looking at the sector level and doing something in the sector level is often a bit more complicated than on company level. Um, yes, and now we are actually uh, in a collective bargaining round in the steel sector. And there we demanded a four day week with full wage compensa compensation for the German steel industry. Um, why did we do that? Uh, let me say something about the background in the steel sector. The steel sector in Germany has around uh, 80,000, 80, 90,000 employees. So this is uh, the size we are talking about. Um, if we look at the German steel sector, we can see that uh, more than 50% of steel workers are already working in a 33, 32 hour model um, because they all made uh, 
supplementary collective agreements on company level to secure employment because the steel sector was a very uh, well, uh, how can I say, um, had a lot of employment problems in the past too. So they are somehow used to play with working times to safeguard employment in the steel sector. So 50% of the workers are already working in this kind of uh, working time systems, which shows that it works, that it works perfectly also with shift systems because it's possible to make more healthy shift systems with a 33 uh, or 32 hour week. And of course, the background is also that we see that the employment in the steel sector will fluctuate strongly due to the transformation which we have there. Um, during the green transformation, more employees in the steel sector will be needed, um, but at its end, we will need fewer um, because for the new technical systems, you don't need so many employees as today in the steel sector. So. Of course, we have the challenge to secure oh, to secure employment in the in the steel sector during so during the transformation. Um, the third reason is that uh, our colleagues in the steel sector um, said very strongly that they have a strong desire for relief during working life. Um, we have a pension aid of sixty seven years now. And if you work in the steel sector, actually you don't manage to work so long. So they said the work is uh, so hard that we need uh, more relief during our working lives because we want to go healthy to our retirement. Fourth reason is, um, of course, a better work-life balance. Uh, they want to have more uh, time for their family, for friends and for hobbies. And uh, not only this, but also uh, more, more time, for example, uh, be trainer at a football club or uh, doing sports or something, which is, I think, also very important for society in general, because it, it uh, keeps society together. And the last reason in the steel industry is that they said we need the bright minds to get this transformation through, because this transformation is very uh, ambitious, the, the transformation to green steel. So uh, we have to be an attractive sector to get the bright minds in the steel sector, because actually uh, the steel sector is not a sector which is so att attractive for, for workers at the moment, because as I said, it's still very hard work. So this is the background in the steel sector, but, uh, and you see here that uh, up to now uh, we had 20,000 workers in industrial action uh, for this demand, and we are going further uh, to have more industrial actions. We don't know when we will end, uh, when we will get a collective agreement, and we don't know how it will look like, um, because we are still in the negotiations. Um, but uh, I'm sure that, that before Christmas, uh, we will have a lot of more industrial action in the steel sector on this issue of uh, four-day week. But these are not the only arguments. Of course, uh, we have also a bit more general arguments why we say um, that we need working time reduction in the future. One, uh, I already mentioned, it's employment effectiveness. Um, the second, I think, was also mentioned uh, to improve the work-life balance and create more relief. Um, of course, if you work less, you have more time uh, for, for relief and more time for, for your family, for whatever uh, you want to have the free time for. Um, but another reason I did not mention up to now is that uh, we also think that uh, if, if we get a new standard of short full-time work and not this long full-time work of 35 or 40 hours, we could maybe achieve a more gender balanced division of work because uh, in Germany, you have a very big part-time sector. I think Germany has the, the biggest part-time sector in Europe and uh, most of the women are working part-time and not long part-time jobs, but uh, more like 20 hours per week. So um, if we think of, of a new standard of shorter full-time work for everybody, we hope that uh, women could get the chance to work longer 
uh, because men would also do some more of the uh, of the care work which is necessary. Um, fourth argument is that we think this could also, especially the the last two arguments, uh, could also be uh, some some bricks against the shortage of skilled workers uh, because if we would mobilize more working potential from women and from elder people, um, then there would be more workers and more, more uh, potential of workers in the labor market. And this in, 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 uh, in addition would mean that we would have more workers on the uh, labor market than today. Uh, last point is uh, climate protection. Um, we refer especially to the to the traffic, uh, if people would go uh, with a four day week, one day less to uh, to work by car, this was, would just uh, diminish emission significantly. Um, and, and the last point is a bit more general because we think uh, that we are in a very big transformation, the digital and the climate induced transformation in industry um, and big changes need big answers. And we think that the four day week could be one of the big answers how workers could also uh, profit from this transformation and not only employers could. Mm. Last points from my side and uh, from my side, and then I will end. Um, of course, we have some essentials if we talk about further working time reduction. Um, First point is that we say, yes, the four day week is, is our goal for the future, but the four day week is some kind of a, of a cipher for further reduction in working hours to 32 hours. Uh, and this is our target vision for the future. It would need wage compensation because otherwise uh, it would mean that we would cut uh, the, the wages of the workers if we wouldn't go for wage compensation. So this is an essential we would need, especially in times of high inflation, people need the money. And uh, last point, if we think of a reduction of working time of a four day working week, um, we need flexible models to implement it because we see that a lot of people, for example, can't imagine a four day week. How should it work with shift work, for example? Um, and that would mean that we would need a flexible model, as I said, for example, continuous layer systems without insertion layers you could uh, do with 32 hours or flexible uh, working hours like uh, four times a week, eight hours or four times seven hours plus one half day. So um, just as, as people would need it. Um, yeah, th that's maybe from, from my side. I know I left a lot of questions open. I hope we will have the time to discuss it. Uh, I will end at this point and uh, wait for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for this inspiring in input, Sophie. And so, and it's interesting to hear that there has been already been made steps in Germany away from the 40 uh, hours norm. Um, and also that there are different models. Um, but now I would like to give the word to Anna. Um, what is your uh, reflection on uh, the input from Sophie? Well, I thought it was very, very interesting. And thank you, Sophie. Um, well, obviously the 35 week, uh, 30, 35 hour week is possible and the four day week is well within reach. We can see this from what has been happening in Germany over the last 20, 25 years or so. And it's very good to have solid examples of not only how it can work, but how it can act, how it actually does work, uh, because people that are um, um, how should I say, not in, not in favor of shorter, less hours or against it that are very much still in the old norm of how you should work. Um, they often say that, no, it's not possible. It could never be done. But here we can see that it has been done to a certain degree and it has worked well. Uh, and this together with all the studies that are now being conducted around the wor world, I think is very, very important for us to move on in, in, um, in other countries and in other areas. No, I think I can't hear you. 
Oh, thank you, Anna, oh. for your words. <laughs> thank you so much. And then I would like to um, give the word to Hampus. What is your reflection from uh, your point of view? Well, thank you. And thank you, Sophie. Very interesting and very inspiring. And I think um, the German case, in, well, it teaches us and reminds us really that a working time reduction is is desirable and, and fully possible. And I think it's worth noting that since the introduction of the 40-hour week in Sweden, we've had a growth of productivity by about 150%. And what that means is that one worker today produces the same amount of output or, or societal wealth as two and a half workers did at the time of the, of the introduction of the 40-hour the week in Sweden. So contrary to what many people will say, the conditions, even in Sweden, uh, for, for a working time reduction, have uh, they've never been better than they are uh, today. And I think it's very important also to note that all the arguments being used against a working time reduction, they mirror what has been said historically in, in these discussions. I mean, the Swedish, uh, what, what are called Federation of, of, for Enterprise, in the 1920s, they said that the, the introduction of the eight our day in Sweden, i.e. the 48-hour week, would uh, would be a complete disaster for the wage earners of, of, uh, of Sweden. So I think going back or, or reflecting upon it now, I think very few people uh, would have wished that we listened to, to those naysayers in the past. And I think, you know, it, it's the same kind of discussion now. And and we can come back to that, but, but maybe just, just a short note that many of the major arguments against a working time reduction today are just uh, uh, theoretical simulations and they don't have the empirical support because what we see empirically is very successful uh, implementations of working time reductions now and historically. Thank you so much for uh, your words, Hampus. Um, I would like to give the word back to uh, Sophie. Do you have any comments on uh, the Swedish perspectives? Yes, I, I think I can share them a lot. Um, it's same in Germany. If we talk about working time reduction, we hear the same arguments uh, against working time reduction from the employers. We heard 30 years ago when we went for the 35-hour week. Uh, we heard 100 years ago uh, when we went for the eight-hour day. Um, it's not changing. And I think this shows that this fighting uh, for working time reduction is one of the essential conflict points between uh, lab between labor and capital. Um, and that's why we always have to fight so much for it. Um, actually, we didn't have one working time reduction uh, in, in Germany, which was not uh, um, pushed through by strikes. So um, I think it's, it's a very hard, uh, fight, but it's worth it. I, I said the arguments uh, and a lot of people just want to have a better work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the essential. And we live in societies which can afford it. We live in rich societies which a very high industrial standard with, with very high productivity. Um, even if if you look at the at the world scale, we have already short working hours, but we are still uh, the most productive uh, industrial nations in in the world. So of course we can afford it. Of course it's possible. Mm. Thank you. Uh, um, can I can I add something there? Of also? course, yes. Um, I also think it's like we now we have we have many examples of how it can work. We have a lot of studies that show that this does indeed work and it works very well. I think it's also very important for unions to to um, uh, to be an example and show that we can also do this. And I, I as of today, this very morning, actually, Deke, Deke's office has signed a collective agreement for 35 hours work week um, because we want to show this is not only something we tell others to do. We are also prepared to 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 try this, see what works, see what doesn't work, and over time really make it work because we we really do believe very strongly that this is the future for the labor market that we work less hours a week 
And could this be a snowball effect to like one trade union starts, the next trade union starts, some country starts, and then the next? Um, I, I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what could a, a, a Swedish reform look like? Is it the trade unions that should uh, push forward? Is it uh, should IG Metall uh, fight and go maybe on on strike for that? Um, how 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 can a Swedish or a German reform look like? Or is it the legislations that should uh, lower the uh, the working hours what is the what do you think um, i'm asking the panel mm? yeah um just like with what was said here before i mean a lot of people don't work 40 hours in sweden either because you have um, local collective agreements that maybe say 37 hours or something like that which is very good um, but we, if we want this to be an equal reform that everybody can take part in and benefit from, then I think we need to uh, legislate uh, about how many hours or days we should work a week, because otherwise it will always only be some people that benefit from this, whereas there will be big groups that do not benefit from it. So if we want to take a big step forward and really you know, push this reform through, we can, of course, work within the framework of the collective agreements, but I think long term and to make it, um, you know, encompass everybody, we need to also work uh, within the legal framework. Mm -hmm. What are the source of uh, Sophie and Hampus? Um, well, I can say that we have, um, we passed a motion at our 2022 Congress at Kommunal, the, the Swedish Municipal Workers Union. And we're advocating for a 30 hour work week with with wage compensation and we're going to be able to or we're going to try to 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 make this happen on on different levels we can work against politicians to to have a uh, regulations changed in by law uh, which is uh, something that we uh, well with the current government it's going to be harder but 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 we can always we can always try to make that happen because as anna says that the the benefit of that is that it's encompassing everyone but we also try to do it in our collective agreements obviously with our central partners we always we we already have some some working time reductions in the last uh, bargaining rounds we had a reduction for people working night shifts for example they're now working uh, 34 hours and 34.33 hours so 34 hours and 20 minutes as a standard but we're also doing this uh, in in local agreements trying to to create good examples to use as leverage in in further negotiations yeah so it, it can look in different but i think uh, down the road it's going to have to be in in, in, a, in a swedish context changing the the working time act for it to encompass everyone and the working time act in in sweden is 40 hours and in in germany it's uh, eight hours days uh, eight um, and it's not uh, limited to 40 hours actually uh, sophie um well, how do you see the way to a shorter working time? Well, in fact, under under the current power relations in Germany, I don't count on a uh, improvement of the Working Time Act. To be honest, mm. um, so uh, well, in the long run, of course, it it could be a solution. But as I said, I I don't believe in it at the moment. Uh, so. I think it's actually it's our uh, our part as trade unions to go for it and to go for further uh, reductions of working time. Um, we as IG Metall decided to do it. Um, now in the steel sector, we will see how it will develop and which way we will go. Um, because as I mentioned before, we have two playing fields, let's say. We have the individual uh, possibility to, to reduce working time via choice options, for example. Uh, we can improve that. We can uh, go for collective reduction of working time. I think these are both ways we, we have to go further uh, and we will just decide uh, in which sector, in, in which situation, uh, which way is the better one. But I think it's, it's our task. Nobody else will do it if if we don't. <laughs> I also want to take uh, questions from the audience. Um, 
So um, here's a, a question from Iceland, um, and uh, she's interested in the uh, Swedish cases. Um, if she's understanding it right, the collective agreement model where the export sector goes first and after then the other unions will get similar wages increases. Um, how does that work when it comes to the negotiation for a shorter work week? So it's for the Swedish um, or maybe Hampus or Anna. I could say something about that. Well, it's mm. re relevant because it's a it's a major, I think, difference between Sweden and and, and Germany. So, whereas uh, productivity growth has been very very high, obviously it's very unequally di distributed in the economy. So, and in Germany, well, unionization rates are very high in in the metal industry and in in the, in the private, you know, uh, in the in the areas of IG Metall, but much much lower in in other sectors of the of the labor market, right? Uh, which means that if you're uh, sort of reaping the benefits in one sector, you you might be able to get you know good conditions, short working hours, high wage increases. Uh, whereas I know that in other sectors of the German labour market, uh, uh, working hours are much much longer. Whereas in Sweden, we've been trying to sort of redistribute that, right? So so like we have a much more centralised uh, uh, and coordinated, I would say, uh, labour uh, movement. Also, the the unionisation rate is much more spread in the economy. Than, than it is in, in the German labor market. So it's like the, the, the metal industry is very much the, the center of, of the German labor movement, whereas in Sweden it's also that, but it's it's much more uh, spread out. So that, that it's, a, it's a crucial difference for how we are doing uh, things. So sometimes maybe the, the workers in the Swedish metal industry would be holding back so as to, to promote wage uh, uh, development in other sectors, whereas that is not as possible if you don't have that, uh, you know, coordination capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question, and it's to uh, Sophie. Um, have you done an analysis on how the skills need uh, look like to in all sectors, including the public sector, in relation to the green transition? Um, no, in fact, we did not. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say. No, but uh, because, of course, uh, we are active in, in the industry and not in the public sector. So, of course, we, we look at the public sector, but I'm, in fact, I'm not able to, uh, to go in, in depth uh, concerning the, the public sector. Um, of course, there will be new skills needed, um, not so fast as we thought and uh, not completely, of course, but um, I think this is also one argument to reduce working time because people will need time to get those skills. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it's also the duty of the employers to give them time uh, to, to educate themselves for the, for the new uh, industry and for the new world, world we are going to. Um, and of course, in some cases, uh, the, of course, the uh, employers also have to pay it. But there will be also diff uh, different cases where uh, workers want to skill themselves uh, into different sectors, for example, um, and they will need time for this. So I think this is an additional argument to reduce working time. So it's a solution for the for the green trans uh, transformation. Um, could it also like working time reduction that it's a, a form of uh, green growth? I heard it before. No, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far to say that working time is a solution to the transformation. <laughs> no, but it has a lot of positive effects um, mm -hmm. if we uh, if we think about how to manage the the green the green transformation. And um, yeah, there is a discussion in Germany. I don't know if it's all uh, also existing in in Sweden uh, that a reduction of working time would lead to a, a greener industry it's about degrowth actually um this is not the discussion we are following as IG Metall because uh we think that in general the reduction of work well the experience the historic experience of reduction of working time is that a reduction of working time pushes productivity in in the economy and is not uh um, diminishing productivity. So I think the reduction of working time is not a degrowth discourse. Uh, it's a discourse about 
better work-life balance, about uh, wealth, uh, time wealth, let's say, but mm -hmm. not about degrowth of industry. Mm -hmm. So it's more uh, something also for the for the life puzzle that is often discussed uh, in Sweden. Um, um, I think um, we have another question in the in the panel. Um, um, a four-hour week, uh, as one is saying, uh, could be great, uh, but uh, the person is worrying about what will happen if the 40-hour week is replaced by confidential working hours in civil service, for example. And uh, the person's understanding is that the confidential working time often means that the employer only has the, to comply to the EU's minimum daily and weekly rest periods, which means uh, significantly less time off than in current Currently in the norm of in, in Sweden, uh, what is the panel's uh, view on that? Is the um, the question of the person? Well, I, I can just say something that I mean, what we've seen it, it, with with historical you know working time reductions and also in pilots in Sweden is that they have led to actual uh, reductions in 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 working time. So we know that it's effective. I mean, in the <clears throat> well, over time and and, and certain like for uh, Arbeitstid or what, what I think what was alluded to here, uh, I mean we we can have that kind of um, problems, but but they would they would still be be around with with a forty hour weeks too. Can I just comment something about the the life puzzle, which I think is uh, is interesting that because I, I I forgot to say that, but Sophie talked about uh, gender equal. Uh, job market or the like the the gender balance and working trade reduction or something mm -hmm. because I Please think it's a very yeah. it's a very very relevant point to make also in this for the Swedish context because essentially the Swedish 40 hour week was introduced in a society of housewives I mean it, we we it was built upon the fact that you did your 40 hours but you came home and your kids were home the 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 house was clean the dinner was on the table everything and now we've had a very very positive you know uh, development in Sweden that we have been pushing as, as a union, where where women are, are much more uh, engaged in in in, in, uh, in paid employment, but we've so we've had a modernization of the labor market, but we've not had a, a modernization that that uh, of the of the working time regulation. So what this means is that back in the 70s and even more so in the 60s or 50s, like on a household level. Uh, the standard working time would be 40 hours for a household, whereas now it's often 80 hours, which means that of, uh, this is obviously something that is creating, you know, very much press on, on people's life, life puzzles. So, it, and it's also something that we hear from our members, like that are mainly female members working in sectors that are, are uh, female dominated, uh, that it's a, it's a major obstacle towards a fully gender equal job market. It's the reason why many people uh, are still working in part time, because certainly if you're working in a blue collar job and if you have a 45 minute commute, it's just the time is just not enough. Like if you're 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 supposed to do all those things outside of, of, of paid uh, labor, things that were previously done by by a housewife, essentially. And that's also something to be remembered when we're comparing ourselves to other countries where that model is still persisting. I mean, Many other countries that work the same amount of hours as us or longer, they have a system that is based on housewives or unpaid labor staying at home. So if we want a gender equal labor market, which many people say they want, all parties say that, well, then we also have to have a, a working time regulation that enables that. Thank you for the word. So we need to look more on the unpaid work too and to calculate that together so that you have the full time of, uh, yeah, uh, the workload of a person. Um, very interesting. And now the time is flying and uh, we need to come to an end. Um, so uh, thank you so much for this interesting discussion and um, for the participation from Sweden, all the no other Nordic countries and Germany. And uh, I also would like to give this uh, last word to, to Anna Trober. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you so much to the panel. Uh, but so many interesting and smart things have been said. Uh, and also thank you to everybody who has been listening. I'm looking through my notes here and 
I think it's undeniable that shorter work hours uh, lead to a better work-life balance. It leads to better health. Um, so for it's it's something that is very good for the individual. But I think it's also very good for society. Um, it's been touched upon a little bit during the conversation. Um, I think Sophie mentioned that if you have more time away from work, you also have more time to do other other stuff, to join local organizations, take part in club activities or whatever, things that bind us together. And in a very polarized word, that is very important. Uh, we've also mentioned climate, which I think is something that um, it, it, it's a challenge for us all, um, everywhere, wherever we live. Uh, I think that is something that unions also must take part in um, dealing with and uh, and find solutions for in different ways. Uh, and then, of course, also like like Hampus said here at the very end about uh, equality, we need to look into those things because you know uh, inequality is not a new thing, but it it kind of sticks. It won't it won't let go, and we need to. We need to work with that and we need to find a way to uh, make life more equal for people. Um, so I will not keep you too long, but thank you very, very much to everybody who has been following this. And um, also we're in December, so I would like to sign off with wishing you all a happy holiday. Yes, have a happy holiday. Thank you, Anna, for your last words. And thank you all for your time and attention. And this session uh, has been recorded and will be available afterwards. Um, yes, and I wish you all a nice afternoon. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.